The next Sunday we bought <laughs> we bought a Tesla wow. after we test drive it. <laughs> Welcome back, Berserkers. In this video, we're here at the Queen City EV Show in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're going to be talking to all kinds of EV owners about their electric vehicle origin story. Mount up, Berserkers. Let's head into battle. All right, guys, we're here with Andrew and his 2018 Model X and his 2018 Model 3, correct? Yep. All right, Andrew, talk to me about your Tesla origin story. Let me know how you became aware of them and what made you want them. Um, so this was actually before the Model 3, you know, before the release of the Model 3, I kind of was pay paying attention to that event, and then the event happened, watched it, I was like, okay, maybe, I kind of like the idea of it. I had a 99 Expedition at the time, which I actually still have, it's kind of mothballed at this point, but, mothballed. yeah, so <laughs> it's, uh, I was like, hmm, you know, I think I'd like to go electric, and, really, and then I watched the event, I'm like, you know what, so about five days after the, the Model 3 event, I put down a, a reservation for it, and then, you know, Model 3 event, it's like four years before, right? Yeah. So now we're just waiting and waiting, and now I'm getting closer. The, 18th, the threes are just getting around the corner. I'm like, you know what? I should see if I want one of these Tesla things. Yeah. So <laughs> I call up to the Charlotte Center. I'm like, hey, can um, I want to test drive one of them. So like, well, obviously threes aren't out, so it's S's and X. So we go down, or actually we schedule an appointment for an S, and then I call because that's my job. I always make sure everything's prepared. I call a week before. And like, oh, no, we don't have a reservation for you. I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? It was uh, for my birthday. It was kind of going to do what I was going to do for my birthday. Yeah. My wife's all, oh, mad in the background. They're like, how about this? Can't do it this weekend, but next weekend I can give you an S for the weekend. Wow. So they gave me an S for the weekend. 350 miles, 18 different people later in a weekend, I took around <laughs> an S, drove everywhere I around Charlotte. I'm like, oh, yeah. This I think I'm, we're definitely getting a three. And then we started doing the math going, huh. Can we do two? <laughs> and then as an X or an X, and my wife's like, well, I'm not doing the S. I, if I'm, she had an Explorer, so I was like, if I'm doing them, get the X. So I'm like, well, let's do the X then maybe. Let's go try the X. But then Charlotte's uh, service center, all of a sudden, this is years ago, stopped doing uh, drives altogether because of a legal thing that they were doing with the state. Uh, so we drove to Raleigh and met up with a now YouTuber up there and drove the X around and then placed the X order and then... It's all history from there. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, so uh, I, I recall when I first spoke to your wife a few minutes yeah. ago, she made it very clear to delineate, this one's mine, yeah, yeah, this that her. one's my husband's. Well, I got this for six months until the three got here, and then this is her. I get to, you know, car shows and stuff like this, I get to take this one a little bit more, but that, <laughs> this is mine, this is hers. But it's very telling because sometimes people say, well, that is that really a true SUV? But oh, yeah. coming from a Ford Expedition, yeah, she exactly. wanted the X. She, she, well, I had the Expedition, and I went to the 3, but she had Explorer with the X, and uh, we would definitely wanted a vehicle. This is the seven-seater version, and we go to Orlando all the time, so we, my sister lives down there, so we wanted that, that haul back and forth. So, What's your favorite feature about your Teslas? Um, you know, the doors are cool, you know, <laughs> I mean, when we got this, not as much anymore now, Rivians and everything else are really at the door, but the doors don't, aren't as impressive anymore, but those first two years, when you pulled up in any parking lot and opened the door, everybody, what? <laughs> and so, I mean, it's a cool thing to really, people, what is that? And yeah. then from there, oh, it's an all electric, what? Is it? Oh yeah, it's faster than all these cars here. What? What? And it just starts the conversation. So that's why I like this car personally. And the air suspensions and all the other stuff. And she's got the, the the free uh, maps and radio. Mine, I don't I don't have any of that on mine. I didn't pay for it. So, but uh, mine, I just love that how low it is. Yeah. I you know expedition zero to sixty in twelve minutes. I think yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit different, and it's just fun to get in and move and, and stay low and go. That's awesome. And just so you know, Falcon Wing doors. Often when I ask people their favorite feature, the, the, the doors is very common. So, Andrew, thank you very much for being here with us and talking to us. All right, guys, we're here with D. Wayne and his 2019 Model S, and he just said something that I want to hear more about. D. Wayne, you said that the 2019 was the best year. Talk to me about that. Well, 2019 was the last year for the EV credit. Okay. It was the last year, and the 2019 Tesla Model S was the last vehicle to have free supercharger for life. That... That actually, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So nobody can ever find, you know, if you, I mean, if you get a 2020, you got to pay for supercharged 2020. They would never bring that back again. So the 2019 was the last year for the free supercharger for life. So when I got my 2019, I had 25 miles on it. Nice. I have 117,000 now. Have you had any issues with it? None whatsoever. All I put on was a set of tires. Okay, so I'm going to ask this because I've been asking people lately. Now, I was told by the internet that once you pass 100,000 miles, you got to re replace the whole battery pack. Is that true? 
Oh, no, because I still have unlimited miles and my eight-year warranty. I have an eight-year unlimited mile warranty. So the key thing about that, I never had no worries. I, on the one thing I said I did have, they changed my air filters for $25. Nice. Then that's the in-cabin air filter. Yeah. So do you have a, a bioweapon protection? Mode? I have the HEPA filter. He said I probably got, he said about another 50,000 miles if I have to change that. And that's only, he said it'd be 50 bucks. <laughs> so now let me ask you this is this a performance no this, i didn't want the performance because i have a very heavy foot okay so i think at 3.1 yeah. zero to 60. Well, yeah that, that counts but <laughs> that 2.7 it's still not much but the performance gotcha. i didn't really need it with this so now what's your tesla origin story when did you become aware of tesla and and you want just figured out that you wanted a model s well i wanted tesla when they first came out but I had to do my research. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm American-made, so I bought a Chevy Malibu in 2016. Okay. From 2016 to 2019, I did the numbers. It just didn't good. They didn't look good. So I said, I'm going to get me a Tesla. So I, I saved my money. It's supposed to be a C8 Corvette. Okay. My retirement vehicle. Uh huh. From the military, 30 years. It's supposed to be a Corvette. Yeah. But the cost of ownership, the price of it, this was just a better deal. You can't beat it. No. Once they gave me the credit, I only paid 63. What's my credit? And then I got the free unlimited supercharger for life. Yep. So you never pay for fuel again the rest of your life. I've not in three years, 117 miles. I only paid for a set of tires and 25 dollars for air filter. You can't beat it. No, no, no. D Wayne, thank you for being here with us. I oh, appreciate it. All right, guys, we're here with Eric and his 2020 Suron X. Eric, talk to me a little bit about how you became interested in e-bikes and how you came about knowing that you really wanted one. So the first thing I did was I got in a one KLX 140, a little, little dirt bike, little trail bike, and hit a tree. Oh, okay. So I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm perfectly <laughs> fine. Wear the helmet always. And then I was like, I hate dirt bikes. And then I saw in California that they were riding e-bikes. So I was like, okay, well, let's try that out. I begged my dad on my hands and knees to get an electric bike. And then it's been off to the races ever since. So what, what do you do with this? Do you, do you race it or do you use it for transport back and forth to school or anything? Um, I use it for everything, Every, everything just kind of because I don't have a license just yet. So I, I ride it pretty much everywhere, everywhere that's in a 20 mile radius. So I can get there and back 40 <laughs> miles. But yeah, I race it, race it, wheelie it, do it on trails, jumps, everything, everything a, a mountain bike and a dirt bike can do in one. And you heard Eric, always wear the helmet, always, 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 always. So now you hit on something there as far as as far as the range, how, about about how much range do you get out of a full charge? 40 miles and an hour on charge, like hour to charge it. So about an hour charge it, you get 40 miles. All right. And so would you recommend it to somebody if, if you were talking to someone? I would recommend it to anybody. To anybody? Anybody that has an extra 4,000 to spend on it, this would be the best thing ever. ever. Better than a mountain bike, better than a dirt bike, better than a pedal bike, anything. Fantastic. Eric, thank you for being here with us, man. Always I appreciate always. it. Appreciate it. All right, guys, we're here with Kareem. He's from High Point, and he's got some big things going on in the EV space. Kareem, talk, talk to me about what you got going on. Well, actually, I'm from Costa Rica, Limon, Costa Rica. <laughs> but um, I'm up in the High Point area at East, on East Chester Drive, mm -hmm. Elite Diversity Center. Um, Elite stands for Everyone Learns Individually Through Education. We have Karma TV and Two Bar Radio, which is our platforms that we operate on. Now, you were talking to me. Was there a fundraising event where, where there's some things going on with Aptera and Rivian? Yes, so um, over at Elite Diversity Center, we'll be building um, a tiny house in November, actually three models, and we'll be taking them down to Florida and giving them away. And our good friend over there, Brian Iverson, will be providing a solar porch for these um, properties where um, they are able to charge uh, throughout the day and then store the um, power, and then you can reuse the power at a later time. So um, it's just using innovative technology, um, to do something good in the community and to educate people on, on things that are changing, you know, adaptations, you know, ways they can get involved, you know, it's grants and things like that out, out here in the community as well that people don't know about. So I just try to bridge the gap and create a platform for people to be able to use, um, to be able to get transparent information, you know, streamline information, but also to work with corporations and businesses as well. Now, if people wanted to participate in the fundraiser and donate, is there a website they can go to or something like that? Yes, we have a Give Pulse um, website, which is directly connected to um, High Point University, and it's Karma Contracting is the uh, entity which is directly connected with High Point University. Do you know the website offhand we can, we can put up on the screen? Um, Elite Diversity 
DiversityCenter.com. EliteDiversityCenter.com. You guys go to that website, participate in that fundraiser, and help support the good work that Kareem and, and, and his coworkers are doing. Thank you, Kareem. Thank you. I appreciate it, brother. All right, guys, we're here with Brandon Flash and his 22 Rivian. As he pointed out, the only one they're delivering is the 2022 Rivian. <laughs> no Brand 2023s <laughs> So he's got the channel EV Nomad, correct? Yeah, it's uh, soon to be rebranded to Brandon Flash, most likely. Oh, but Oh, yeah. <laughs> People seem to do that. Ben Solins that used to be Teslanomics, and, and yeah. Kim Java, that used to be like Tesla. People yeah. do that. You don't want to be backed into a corner with your channel name, and I think going with your name and building a personal brand, I think, is a, the best long-term move with YouTube, in my opinion. Anyway. Flying in the face of Brandon's advice, please subscribe to Tesla Barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> So talk to me about your EV origin story. We've been talking off yeah. camera and you have had a lot of different EVs. Yeah, so my original EV story starts in 2014. I worked at an independent BMW repair shop and they had one of the first BMW i3s in the entire state of Minnesota. Uh, I ended up putting about 10,000 miles on that because I was like the guest shuttle uh, parts runner guy and just fell in love with the EVs as a whole. Followed it from the sidelines for quite a while, and then in 2018, 2019, somewhere around there, I took the plunge because I finally had enough money that I could actually afford to buy my own. Uh, got a Chevy Volt that was kind of the gateway drug of sorts. Because <laughs> I, it, it was very much a stepping stone. I didn't intend that to be a long-term vehicle, but I just wanted to have that while I got used to the charging infrastructure, setting it up at home, all that fun stuff. Uh, had that for nine months, bought a Tesla Model S, put actually 100,000 miles on that in just under two years, 60,000 in 2020 alone went to every state in the lower 48. Um, so we can agree you enjoyed driving that one. Yeah, uh, it was pretty good. Uh, I, I don't know if I loved how it drove, but it was a pretty good vehicle and free supercharging is hard to say no to. So, uh, uh, okay, another one. The free supercharging is a favorite feature, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, big time. I mean, it's hard to say no to free charging and being able to drive just about anywhere. And once you're over 100,000 miles, the depreciation is essentially nothing. So free supercharging, putting more miles on, it basically doesn't matter anymore. So on that, let me ask you a question about that. Yeah. You said you visit every state in the lower 48. Yeah. Did I get? So what, is the free supercharging kind of a cornerstone of, of you being able to do that? Oh yeah, big time. If I had to pay for supercharging at that point in my life, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And if you'd had to pay for gasoline in any other vehicle? I definitely wouldn't have been able to do that unless I had like a Prius, but I wouldn't have wanted to do that in a Prius. So talk to me about the Rivian because, yeah. you know, I've seen a couple in the wild, but I've not seen too many. So this one is in the signature Rivian blue as well. Yeah. Talk to me about how we ended up in a Rivian. Uh, so I had a Volkswagen ID4, Polestar 2, but both of those I actually had after I ordered the Rivian in February 2021. So that was when I still had my Model S. Wanted to have some experiences in between, get a few tax credits, certainly didn't suck. Um, <laughs> uh, but I ordered this and I knew the moment I saw it, I had to have it. It basically combines Tesla, Ford Raptor, Range Rover into one vehicle. And I always wanted a Ford Raptor, but I never wanted the 10 miles per gallon that went along with having a Ford Raptor. Yep. Uh, so here we are. I took the lever of this uh, September 17th. Uh, in Minnesota, I drove it out to Colorado, spent a few days out there, and then drove back to North Carolina. So I have over 4,000 miles on this in about three weeks or so, and I'm just loving every moment of it. So we can assume you, you really enjoy driving this. Yeah, I really enjoy driving this more than any other EV I've had. This is by far the best EV I've owned. So what's your favorite feature of this one? I would say the ride comfort. I mean, that's not really a feature per se, but it's a quality of the vehicle, mm -hmm. and it's just it's a really nice place to spend time because the suspension is just so well-tuned. Fantastic. So if you could change one thing about it, if you could improve one thing, what would that be? I don't know if there's any one thing. I would say massaging seats. <laughs> I, I, got, I got spoiled with the Volkswagen ID4. It had a lumbar massage, and I've experienced like the Mercedes EQS and Lucid Air that have really good massaging seats. And I've, I'm just kind of spoiled at this point. As, so I've never had a car that had massaging seats. You said that, and I'm like, as long as we're dreaming, I'd like a pony. <laughs> <laughs> no, but vehicles do have that. It, it's a pretty common feature this at this point in higher-end cars. And, I mean, it has everything else. Why not have massaging seats at that point? I mean, I, I guess I can't argue with the guy. <laughs> so Rivian, definitely Brendan approved. Check him out on EV Nomads. And uh, without any doubt, Rivian, let's get some massaging seats in here for my guy. <laughs> Thank you very much, brother. Appreciate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> All right, guys, we're here with Jerry and his Nissan Leaf. Jerry, talk to me a little bit about your EV origin story. Off camera, you mentioned you've been driving EV for over a decade. That's correct. A uh, decade ago, it was new technology. I was into new technology, so I said, 
Nissan offered me a $300 a month lease for three years. I couldn't go wrong, no money down. So I took it. At the end of three years, I had such a favorable experience, I wanted to convert it to a full purchase. So I bought $16,500 worth of money in this car, and I've had it for 10 years, and I only had to buy two more things. New tires, because I got 49,000 miles on the car, and a uh, new battery, which is a small battery for ignitions. I didn't realize I had a small battery. <laughs> but anyway, my wife was very, very apprehensive about driving a car. What happens if we run out of electricity? So she started driving it to the grocery store, which was two miles away. And then she started driving it to the uh, shopping mall. That's 10 miles away. Then she started driving it to my daughter's house, which is 20 miles away. Now I no longer have a car. This is her car. She <laughs> loves it. She, I said, what do you love so much about it? She said, I don't have to go to the gas station. <laughs> so that's a woman's view, but that's my view is great. It's a nice, cheap, inexpensive run car there's nothing cheap everything Indeed. inexpensive <laughs> yep well fantastic so the favorite feature for both of you it sounds like is you don't ever have to go to the gas station gas station or maintenance there's no maintenance to the car yeah that's also a fantastic thing and that's one of the reasons i think a lot of the car dealers are not pushing the new electronics because they're going to lose revenue on their maintenance it, it sounds reasonable to me jerry i really appreciate you being here with us thank you for talking to us about your origin story all right, guys, we're here with Doug and the Ford F-150 Lightning. This is the first one that I've personally seen in the wild. And so, Doug, talk to me a little bit about your EV origin story and how you came to be in possession of this Ford F-150. Well, I just knew Ford was uh, going to do a good job with it, and we wanted to get into an electric vehicle. And with the price, that they were, the price point they were originally offering with this, it was a no-brainer. So we hopped on it right away. The length of wait wasn't an issue because it just gave us more time to save up for yep. uh, the car and uh, yeah so we just first day we reserved it uh, then we uh, ordered it as soon as we got the offer they built it in July delivered in August and here we are so this is your first EV it is our first EV now what was it about uh, you said you were wanting to go electric what was it about electric vehicles that had you intrigued well one day just for fun uh, for Mother's Day I think it was we're trying to find something cheap and uh, fun to do with my wife for Mother's Day we said hey let's test drive a Tesla uh -huh. and it, just like this car I mean electric driving is a superior driving experience it's just I mean we were sold right away we're like this if you can afford it this is the way to go uh, it's just better driving all around so when this came out we said yeah we're gonna get one of these Fantastic. Doug, thank you so much for being here with us, man. I appreciate it. This is awesome. All right, we're here with Teddy and his 2019, 2019 Model S. Teddy, talk to me about your Tesla origin story. What made you want a Tesla? So um, we were really looking for a new car for the family, and we had a car that we were willing to trade in, and it really was the right fit for our family. We had just enough room for everyone to fit in. We have lots of storage in the front and the back, and it's perfect for what we use it every day. Um, we found out about it through um, a funny story actually. My stepmom was going to buy a purse, sorry, she was going to sell her purse. <laughs> <laughs> I was selling a Louis Vuitton purse that I had on Facebook Marketplace uh -huh. and the buyer wanted me to authenticate it. They wanted to make sure that it was really designer and not fake <laughs> and my dad got bored and wandered off <laughs> and when we got there, he looked and he said, I am not going in there. And he stumbled upon a Tesla store. He said, I see some kind of a car store over here. I'm going to go in. This, like, this is this Tesla place, and they've got, they've got some cars, so I'm going to be in here looking. Um, one of their showrooms. And he found it and fell in love. I walk out, and I look in there. He's like, come here, I want to show you this. I want to show you this. <laughs> we talked to a doctor who bought one for himself and then one for his wife, who the guy probably could have been a salesperson for Tesla. Um, but I said, well, hey, if you want to test drive it, let's just let's test drive it. Let's just see. He's like, well, I would never buy one. Just, just, it'll be just fun to, you know, get some more information on it. And a month later, <laughs> here we are. The next Sunday we bought, we bought a Tesla wow. after we test drive it. <laughs> you know? All because dad wandered off. Yep. Speaking as a dad, dads do that from time to time. We wander off and come back with expensive things that we didn't expect to buy. 
we're never going to buy one. Let's just drive it for fun. So what's your favorite feature of it? I like right now what was going on in here, which is being able to watch movies when you charge. Nice. <laughs> Teddy, what's your favorite feature of this car? I have to say the speed. Do you have any great acceleration stories for me? Um, that one. Tell me that one. The one you just thought of but didn't want to tell me. So, we were next to, like, uh, it was one of those muscle cars. Like, uh, it was like a, a Dodge or a Ford or something. And they're, like, revving their engine, like, like real show-offy, yeah. you know. And they're, like, looking at us, like, giving us a side eye. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to beat you. Uh -huh. And light turns green, floors the accelerator, and we're gone. We're at the next light before they even make it through the intersection. Wow. And my dad and I are just looking at each other laughing the whole time. It was hilarious. <laughs> Do you have any good acceleration stories for us? <laughs> Yeah, there are a lot of them. I remember the very first time getting in, actually, when they took us around and my husband test drove. I was sitting in the back and then the salesperson was in the front. I literally grabbed onto the seats. <laughs> and it sounds like a, an airplane on the inside. Some of the tones and the yeah. dings sound like an airplane. So I actually felt like it's the force of an airplane taking <laughs> off. It was really cool. So, Teddy, I've got to ask you. Yes, you got an out-of-time license plate on your the front of your car here. Talk to me about that. All right. So that was actually my addition to it. I think it was last year I bought it for my dad for a Christmas present. And we've always joked that, you know, the car's so fast it's like it time travels. And so, you know, obviously, Back to the Future, the DeLorean, you yeah. know, it, it had to happen, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, you can't top that story. Teddy, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate yes, it. Lauren, thank you so much thank for you. being here with us. I appreciate it. I want to thank everybody who took the time to do an interview with us today here at the Queen City EV Show in Charlotte, North Carolina. We met lots of great people and we had a phenomenal time here today. Hit that subscribe button if you like content like this because we got more great content to come. Either way, thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next battle.